Gabrielle, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, just to begin uh, the discussion, then, I'd love to hear a little bit about the work you're doing on Manus Island. Yes, we have a project. That project is called Community uh, Climate Change Adaptation. Uh, it's a joint project funded by the Australian government, OSAID. And with agreement between the government of Australia and government of Papua New Guinea, Manus province, one of the 19 provinces in, in the country, was selected as a pilot project. Uh, basically, the goal of this project is to build resilience of com communities and their ecosystems to the impact of climate change. And how is that being achieved? What, what is actually happening on the ground? There are three objectives. One, we are trying to actually understand what climate change is all about. How we are doing it is we are mobilizing the clan-based organization, the actual villages who are affected by the climate change impacts. And they, these villages have been mobilized and they've gone around the villages in the island and talked to, to the people about the climate change and its effect, meaning how the climate change has had an impact on their lives. Sea intrusion, washing over the foreshore, erosion of the shore and falling of the coconut trees. It's happening. What kinds of impacts is this having on, your, on the communities on your island? Well, we have the, it affected the livelihood of the people. For example, uh, their water. At the moment, the water system has been affected by uh, salt water intrusion. So they have to put up the water tanks and so on. The food crops are affected as well. So they have to shift the gardens from point A to point Z. Um, the health is being affected as well. Because of water coming in, there's so many mosquitoes. And because of mosquitoes, there's increase in the, uh, the number of cases of malaria and so on and so forth. And how, how are communities responding? What's, you know, how on earth do people cope in these circumstances? Yes, they are coping. And the initiatives are coming from them. For instance, with the sea erosion, what they have done is actually put up the fence against the sea coming, hitting the shorelines. They put up the houses. Instead of, instead of the houses on the ground, they build it on the stilts. This is how they are responding. They are actually, um, they are actually um, negotiating for those in the island, negotiating with the people on the mainland for food, food stuff, because this, the gardens in the islands are being affected. And you talked earlier about assistance that you've had from international donors like Ausaid. This conference is about communication. Do you think that local communities and, and big organisations are working well together on the whole? Yes. In Manus, we've got three, um, three uh, major non-government organizations. We've got TNC, we have WWF, we have um, World, World um, Wildlife Conservation Society, all working in Manus. Although Manus is small, only about 50,000 people, but we've got three major groups. Apart from that, we have the University of Papua New Guinea, we have the Manus provincial government and we have the, the village people. They're very important key partners. And what will you take away from this event here in, in Hanoi and Vietnam about, about community-based adaptation? What, what lessons have you learned and what will you take back with you? Well, before I came here, I had a number of expectations. One, the question of what will I take back for my country and for the project that I worked on. Second, how will I help other countries that will come in here, share the lessons with them? Um, since then, I think the program has been divided into two. We have the, we have the uh, field visits, that's good, because we're exposed to actual situations on the ground. That gives us the practical experiences of what's happening in Vietnam. The second part of the program is more um, theoretical 
So we are trying to theorize what's happening in their respective countries and um, tell the conference what's happening. Uh, it's, it's good. Are there, any, are there any specific lessons or themes that you're going to take from this conference and be able to apply in your work at home? Well, we've got a number of tools that being um, articulated here that probably we may take back or reinforce our, the tools we are using back in Papua New Guinea. For instance, participatory video, uh, participatory uh, 3D, three-dimension model, that we are using that also in Papua New Guinea. Gabriel, thank you so much for speaking to us. It's been really interesting to hear from you. No problem. Thanks a lot.